Well, my name's John and I am clearly an icebreaker aholic. I didn't know that, but then I had a little rummage around my garage and um, to see all this rubbish here, that's obviously what I am. So to put things into context, um, we've got all this coronavirus going on at the moment. I can't do any fishing. I've done a little bit of tidying up in my garage and I've also done a little bit of tidying up on my, um, on my computer. And I found a load of old footage um, from last uh, a year last February, really nice footage of me breaking the ice and all the effort I went to. Didn't catch a lot that day, to be fair, nobody did. But it's quite interesting to watch someone spending all that effort breaking the ice. And a lot of you lot out there will probably think it's, it's stupid breaking the ice. But now I think a lot of you would like to break the ice just, for, just to go fishing. Obviously, we're on lockdown. We're not allowed to fish. But yeah, anyway, as I was uh, doing my shed, um, I came across all my ice breaking implements and... Um, and it'd be nice to show some of the things I used in that video and also show you just all the stuff I've, I've accumulated. So uh, I've got a great big blue tub here full of stuff I don't use, which is old dumbbell weights, things like that. These are metal ones and they're two kilos. Don't know how heavy that one is. I've got, I don't know where that one came from, ball and chain. I'll probably use that one day if I lose another one, but that's a nice little icebreaker I got from somewhere. Might have been off my old mate, Bob Taylor. God rest his soul. So uh, it might have been. I've got a couple of bobs that I've, I've inherited, but um, I'm not sure if that one was. And I've also got this beauty here, which weighs a ton. I think that was off Bob as well. Look at that proper hammering thing. That's on a bit of rope as well. I'd actually like a bit more chain on that, but that weighs, I don't know, it must be six kilos, something like that. So uh, I'm loads and loads of rope. That's what I'm doing with that. And uh, chain that I've never ever used, all sorts of stuff in there. That's just some of the stuff I've accumulated. Let's put that down there. Oop. Forgot I've got even more stuff down there. So uh, let's show you. Now this is an icebreaker that my good friend Tommy Boyce made me. You can actually see it on there. John N. Peg Arthur. And it's a bit of a beast. You can see it's got serrated edges and that. And uh, I've never, because we never had much of a winter, we never had a chance to to use this properly and we never have the severe winters that we've had in previous years so that's still yet to be used we'll pop that in there and normally what i use when it's really really thick ice is what i call big bertha and that is a proper sledgehammer head full size i'm not sure what kilos they are but that's a proper sledgehammer head and um it's actually two lengths of thin chain which seems to cut through really thick ice quite long quite well and it's really long it's a good good meter or, or more long there so I can really get a saw in action um, I'm not going to chuck that far not gonna, when it's that thick you ain't going to chuck far and you don't need to chuck far you only catch five six meters out and on days like that it could probably take you 30 40 minutes to break that far out so that's big bertha I want to keep them all in the old chop worm sacks uh, or, or worm sacks should I say so that goes in there not on the most probably about 10 12 meters of rope that that goes in there and then this is my favorite one this is one you'd have seen on the video this is a little bertha it's only a little lightweight um i'm not sure is there any weights on these not sure but i can throw this 15 meters so uh maybe more maybe less i don't know but um and that's about as far as the rope is as well and these are a few knots on picking as you might have seen in the video again that goes in one of these chop worm bags well, i keep saying chop worm bags don't you a bag so uh and then I've got another one here, which I don't know what's in there. That's a ball and chain. I don't know where that's come from. I've never used that, so I don't know where that's come from. Like I say, I just seem to be a icebreaker collector. And then I've got another one here. <laughs> this is, uh, I don't know, I actually took this once. I actually got it all set up, but it kept popping out the hole, which that sort of shape does pop out the hole. But I actually made that, put it on a bit of foam, wrapped it all up. Generally, I do like to wrap them up nice and neat but once your hands are cold and that you worry about putting it away afterwards so i can go in that sack again <laughs> um, essential bits of gear you must have a decent pair of gloves um just to stop your hands getting really really cold and uh it, and obviously stop all the friction burns and everything but you'll really really appreciate a decent pair of gloves so i've normally got a couple of pairs of those handy um lots of polypropylene rope and washing line material and that i've always got loads of that again that's going in that tub um now the other thing i use and i've learned that 
because I've been canal angler, it was always about breaking the ice and stirring up the bottom and everything. I've learned on a lot of snake lakes and F1 venues, you don't actually want to um, disturb the bottom. A lot of these places, the bottom's pretty rancid and F1s don't like going over a, a bottom that's really rancid. So that's what I've learned the hard way. So sometimes you want, um, this is what I use. I can show, I can throw that 20 meters, um, fill that with water and, and that will float on the surface, break the thinner ice and then you just clear it away without disturbing the bottom. So that's really, really useful on F1 style snake lakes and that. Sometimes you want to cloud up the bottom for silverfish, but generally for F1s, I find you don't want it. So there's that one. And then I've got a little can there to mess around if I need to. And some people use a proper old jerry can sort of thing there, like, you know, a diesel can or whatever. That'll go a long way and that'll be obviously a lot more heavy duty. It's not gonna smash when it hits the ice and that's for better for thicker ice. Um, so that's a good option as well. <laughs> um, I have actually got in in the past with chest waders and uh, used an old pick and everything. And you, I've learned the hard way. You need a pair of goggles when you're doing that because the spray that comes back is ridiculous. But um, I quite famously won a, I think it was a Fred Laver Memorial match on the uh, Morsel Canal, uh, 350 roach. Um, through ice that was probably that thick, I don't know. It took forever to break. Could probably break three meters and uh, I emptied it with Bloodworm and Joker and had a cracking day's roach fishing. And I got in with my chest waders. Well, worked a treat that day and won me the match. Would I do it anymore? Would I do that again if we were faced those sort of conditions? <sighs> probably not, but um, back when I was a, a, a daft younger angler, that's what I used to use, so stuff like that. Um, what else have we got? Um, oh, I've got, um, I've had these two years in this put down matrix bag now i don't lay claim to inventing these this is some adam waken as far as i'm aware I invented but this is plumbing rods and um two sets gives you 20 meters um so and all you do there because it's nice and rigid but it only works with the right diameter of um thickness of ice if it's thin enough it's a bit thicker than cat ice so if it's cat ice you can break with your pole or your pole pot if it's um too thick you have to use a ball and chain or a, or a floating bottle. If it's not, then this is where these come out and you and you put a blade, I've got a blade there on the end. That'll screw in on the end. I've, I've put an adapter on the end of that one, as you can see, about a 3 8 things BSF thread, I think that is, I don't know, something like that. And that goes on the end. It's all arrow darted in and, and pop rivet in, so it's not gonna come out. And you put that all together, make sure you don't twist it the wrong way. Go out to 20 meters and just pull, 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 and that'll just break the ice. But I've had these two years now and I've not come across the right sort of ice to use them yet yeah, i'm gutted because they are they are i've seen them in action and they are right but only when the ice is right so uh and we never had a winter like that this winter just gone so uh um i think we had one day where i broke the ice so uh the winter before broke the ice loads of times so that's it i've got i've got a load of rods in there that'll go up to 20 meters obviously i only wanted about 15 meters but but it's nice to be able to break up to 20 and you can, and they only come in 10 meter length so um you have to buy two sets to get uh, a sensible length of pole so that's me of a breaker and then the final final part of the jigsaw are these beauties now i came up with these 20 years ago something like that i've been using them on the canals um initially this sort of thing this is an old landing net i've chopped off the ends just flattened it out put some pipe lagging around it and a bit of tape and then an old landing net goes on that you can obviously use it as a four or five meter landing net handle but you can often put a landing net handle on a cart pole go out 13 40 meters that will float on the surface and pulls all the ice back towards you i've seen so many people faffing around with other sort of techniques there's not been anything i've seen that's better than that and plus you can push it across the top of the ice and bring it back and all sorts i've had it when the cat ice has reformed on a canal match put this out once the whole lot of cat ice has come back in one go because you've got this this whole length there so that's a great little nifty gadget i've come up with that i've, I've had several incarnations this is one that's got a little um pole cup thread on there so that actually fit on my top and um, my cupping kit obviously you've got to be really really careful make sure your pole sections are together properly keep checking them um, and that'll just go on a cupping kit that's a look much shorter one i often leave that on a separate cupping kit it's great for pulling the ice after you've broken it um but it's also good mid-match makes very little, little disturbance you can just pull the ice out of the way when it starts accumulating again now a little tip for that is also get rid of every single last bit of ice out of your hole and that will help stop the rest of the ice forming if you leave any little bits of ice then ice will accumulate around it so so that's what we use um for that to so get every little last bit of ice out the peg so that's what i do why am i doing that it's it's probably 
What time is it? It's got to be eight o'clock at night now. It's been red hot, 20 odd degrees. <laughs> but um, I'm locked down, clearing out my garage and come across a load of ice breaking stuff and some ice breaking footage. So, uh, so there you go. Get yourself some ice breakers. You've got plenty of time to do it. You might as well do it now whilst it's nice and hot. And uh, then you ain't got to worry about it when it goes cold, have you? So hopefully that's given you an insight into my icebreaker holicanness. Is that a word? I don't know. So anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed that little bit of an insight into um, a bit of a worrying obsession, really, isn't it? So, uh, but hope you enjoyed it. Give us a thumbs up and um, I'll probably show you a few more daft things like this if I get time. Facebook. Um, some of it will go on Facebook. <laughs> I might caption it. It's a good workout, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, good, yeah.
Thank you. 